Welcome to the class of Principles of Communication. In this video, we are going to learn Phase Locked Loop. Phase Locked Loop, or PLL, is a key building block for communication systems. It can be used for down conversion, uh, signal reconstruction, clock synchronization, and the frequency synthesizing. PLL is the module that locks the phase of the output to the input. PLL is a feedback system that detects the phase error between the input and the output. Um, we call that a negative feedback because this is the difference between two phases, delta phi. Delta phi becomes the input to a voltage controlled oscillator, VCO, that adjusts the phase of uh, output signal. The VCO is a module that oscillates at a controlled frequency. So we have uh, <coughs> the, uh, the voltage of this controlled voltage and the frequency, the oscillating frequency is monotonically related with uh, V control. Usually it's increasing, monotonically increasing. So this describes the voltage controlled oscillator, input and output. In practice, we will add a low pass filter just to filter out the high frequency components. So only the difference, delta phi, is emphasized before it goes into the voltage controlled oscillator. If VI and the VO are out of phase, which is unlocked, then the phase detector detects the error and the low pass filter smooths the error signal. The control signal slows down or speeds up the VCO module. Therefore, the phase is corrected. Let's look closely how a V, how a phase lock loop works. Suppose that the input signal is a sinusoidal signal. So VI equals to cosine omega i t plus theta i, where omega i is the frequency in radians and the theta i is the initial phase. And this entire thing here is my phase phi i, which can be calculated or be measured as an integration of the signal of the frequency over time. The output of the VCO is VO. It's also a sinusoidal function. That's cosine omega out O plus theta O out. And uh, this entire phase here is phase phi out, or phi O as we measured. So the phase difference of these two signals, and when we compare at the phase detector, the output of phase detector is the difference. Delta phi is equal to um, omega i subtract omega o t plus theta i subtract theta o. The output of the phase detector is linearly proportional to the phase difference. So we write this as a, a k sub d delta phi. So approximately it's linear, proportional to the phase difference, where kd is a constant. So the output is, uh, is changed as the difference changes. The control voltage out of low pass filter, in general, that's a loop filter. In general, it's just a loop filter. And uh, v con the control voltage is proportional to the signal, out signal output of the detector. So let's just write this as, a, as u d t. It may have some constant gain, it may have some delay, but it's, uh, it's a proportional to u d and it's proportional to delta phi. Now the VCO will tune the output signal with a, with a frequency, that is my radiance frequency omega O. We have the um, 
given an initial frequency, which is the center frequency of the VCO, plus K VCO times V control. So it's a it's a linear linearly proportional to the control voltage, as we know. Uh, this is uh, also linearly proportional to U P U D T, which is the output of my detector refract the difference of phases. Here is U D T, and uh, that's a, a loop filter. loop filter. If the phase error delta phi was not initially zero, the phase detector would develop a non-zero output signal UD. This would cause the VCO to change its operating frequency in such a way that the phase error finally vanishes. So delta phi becomes zero at this time. Now the frequency of the input and output may not be the same. Over time, the phase of the input signal starts to, starts to lead the phase of the output signal. A phase error will build up and increase with time. So the phase detector develops a signal, UD, which also increases with time. This causes the VCO to increase its frequency, V omega out. And then within this term, and then the, the phase difference starts to reduce. After a while, eventually, the VCO will oscillate at a frequency that is exactly the frequency of the input signal, VI. Therefore, finally, not only the phase difference, the instantaneous phase difference is zero, but also the output signal of VCO tracks to the frequency of my input signal, VO equal to VI. Now, at this time, we call that the phase lock loop is locked. From a phase locked loop, let's continue to learn a costas loop. A costas loop operates directly on the received signal. It can do carrier synchronization and demodulation at the same time. A costas loop is named after its inventor, J.P. Costas. The received signal RT is equal to AT, the message bearing signal, um, times the cosine omega CT plus theta, that is the uh, carrier signal. The received signal will be directly, directly mo modulated, demodulated by the carrier down to DC. So multiply by cosine omega C, CT plus theta hat. Now, at this in this case, we assume that we are uh, going to to find the initial phase theta, which is theta hat. Uh, previously, we just taking care of the entire phase, which we call this, this is phi in, and this is phi out. In this case, assume that the carrier frequency is perfectly known. Of course, it works equally well, and it can be easily extended to track the entire phase phi. The top branch is multiplied by cosine omega ct plus theta hat. The bottom branch is multiplied by negative sine omega ct plus theta hat. Therefore, what we need is a needed device for a 90 degree phase shift. This down conversion sinusoidal signal is coming from the VCO. The demodulated signal at the top branch, we'll go through a low-pass filter. And it becomes um, a gamma AT of cosine theta subtract theta hat. The demodulated signal at the bottom branch will also go through a low-pass filter. And the output is gamma AT sine theta subtract theta hat. 
gamma is a gain of the output of VCO and uh, uh, through the L low pass filter compared with my original received signal. Then these two demodulated signal will be combined and I go through a loop filter. Becomes the input to the VCO. The output of the top branch signal is also the modulated signal, and that is the final output of the Costas loop. Now the input to the loop filter is gamma square A square T cosine theta subtract theta hat sine theta subtract theta hat, where theta is the original phase theta hat is my estimated phase, which equals to gamma square a square sine to theta subtract theta hat. And a half here. a square is the power of message bearing signal. Over a period of time, averaged, it will become stable. Or some modulation method, for example, BPSK, A square is a constant. So the input of VCO is uh, proportional to sine to theta subtract theta hat. When a difference between theta hat, the estimated phase, and a theta, the original phase, become smaller and smaller, sine can approximately equals to theta subtract theta hat times 2. This works very well as the input to the VCO, because the input of VCO is this uh, frequency, is this phase difference, positive, negative, or zero, and the output correspondingly will be a high frequency, a low frequency, and its nominal frequency. When the loop is locked, we will have this estimated phase theta equal to original phase theta, and the top branch output will become proportional to the message bearing signal AT. Therefore, a costless loop can do carrier synchronization and at the same time, an output demodulated signal. proportional to the original message bearing signal AT.